Hey there folks, welcome you all to yet another podcast of mine. We are coming at you on a flagons up Friday this week, people. We've been quite regular with the podcast, to be fair, but they've not always been coming on a Friday. <laughs> I don't think we mind, really, but it's nice to have the flagons up Friday, people. Flagons up to you all. Ooh, cheers. You'll have a little sip of this before we get going. There's one topic to talk about today, people. It, well, it's one topic that fractures into a few other topics, and this t-shirt's going to give you a clue. If the thumbnail by now has not... <laughs> I'm pretty sure the thumbnail will have given it away. Cheers to you all. You know I'd share it with you if I could, people. Cheers. Mm. Oh, it's ice cold, that. Oh, ice cold Stella. Good grief, that was lovely. So, quick channel... Right, as always, before we get going, I will, of course, try and put in the... I, I will put some time codes in this week, but obviously the subject matter is... It's really one topic, but it fractures into a few bits, as I say. So what the time codes are by the time I put it up, I don't know. But I will put a time code in for when I begin to talk about the the full subject matter, which is The Last of Us. Part one, as it's being called now. And uh, yeah, we'll start off, as we always do, people, with a little bit of an update on me and how my week's been and all that sort of thing. And uh, a little channel update just to let you know what what I'm on with. And I've had I've had a good week to be fair. And I'm a, I'm on, I'm on holiday, people. I'm on holiday now. I'm going to touch wood here, right? <laughs> I'm on holiday. These are delayed holidays because I got COVID and then got a flu two weeks later. So <laughs> both of those occasions, I was meant to be taking time off. So touch wood, people. I'm on holiday and I am not sick. Touch wood. Touch wood. Touch wood. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so I'm I'm super pleased to be having another week off, and uh, I'm going to start it with the flagons up Friday. And is there any any better way to start your holiday than this flagons up Friday with a nice cold flagon of ale talking about games, people? I don't think there is. Even though I suppose you could argue that the thumbnail kind of says, "Oh, this might be a bit of a negative story." It's not a negative story actually. I've got a little bit of positive spin to put on it. But uh, yeah, but there's nothing nicer about just sitting here and chatting to games with uh, about games with you guys. So my week's been pretty good. The only downside to my week has been that I haven't done any exercise other than a couple of walks because my car. When did this happen? Yeah, last Saturday. In fact, yeah, because I recorded the vlog last Saturday, didn't I? So you know that my car, <laughs> if you watched last week's vlog, my car suddenly decided that the caliper had stuck to the inside of the wheel and I needed to get it all sorted out. So the car was out of action for Monday, Tuesday. Then I got it to the garage on Wednesday. Didn't pick it up till yesterday. And obviously everywhere I can kind of go to do my exercise other than running is in the car. Uh, for whatever reason, I decided not to run. Uh, I'm not sure, but, but I didn't. So what I did instead was I've basically gone on a starve week, which is keeping myself to a thousand or less calories. And uh, that I've actually dropped weight in doing that. Because some sometimes when you get heavily into the exercise, your appetite goes up. It gets very easy to start putting a little bit of weight on that you didn't, that isn't muscle weight or what have you. But you know, so it's nice to have weeks where you just kind of cut back on that. So that's what I've done this week. Even though I've not exercised, I've I've cut down and I've lost weight. So that's that's been good. A uh, tomorrow I'm going to have a chill day, and then on Sunday we're getting back to the exercise. We're going to have a full two hour gym session, possibly followed by a run. People, we shall see. A uh, outside of that work, my day job has been fine. Got a lot done. Uh, well, I got the key thing done that needed done. Uh, much like I did, I was off. Well, was it? I can't remember now, was it two weeks ago I was off and then the week before that there was another thing needed done. So we're building up to, uh, we're building up to new, a, a whole new flock of students, people, for the new year. Enrollment time is coming up. So there's all these new little features that want me to write into the students' portals and stuff where they can do extra things and see extra things and all that sort of malarkey. So that's been good. So I've managed to hit a few targets there. Uh, so all positive people. From a channel perspective, uh, we've finished a Plague Tale, people. I have finished a game. And I did it in 12 parts. And you will have seen 10 of those parts now if you've been watching it. I know it wasn't super popular, but I was loving the game. And there was enough thumbs ups there. I think there was a regular three or four thumbs ups of people that were enjoying it with me. Wanted to see the game through. I knew it wasn't a long game. So, and I with Requ uh, Plague Tale Innocence is the one we just played. Plague, Plague Tale Requiem is about to kick in this year. I can't remember the date, but it comes out in a couple of months, I think. But it's coming out this year, which is the follow-up to it. 
I've got to tell you, people, what an amazing game. You'll get the last two parts tomorrow tomorrow evening and Sunday morning, I think. And oh, honestly, that game would have got a 10 out of 10 had it not been for just a couple of... I'm going to say one boss fight and one particular section where you ha uh, basically what what the game does like really really well is it's stealth stuff uh and the minute but the minute you've got enemies running at you or you're in a boss fight with something chasing you the mechanics that they've given you don't really lend themselves to it so you find yourself in the struggle and it's the sort of boss fights that I kind of don't like. Well, there's only one boss fight I'm going to moan about, right? Even though in the in the big finale where there's the big final boss fight, I moan a bit, but it's only because I'm getting it wrong. And I kind of, I do figure out eventually how you do do it. But, so I'm not going to, I'm not going to say there was anything wrong with that boss fight. I think it was fine. There was just two pieces that made it drop from a 10 to a 9. And it was... Uh, the bot the the sort of pre boss boss fight where you were just running away all the time in a very confined space having to try and hide from something try and get shots on fire try and get shots on him uh, and it was just all kinds of not great the uh, the concept of the boss fight was fine and if I'd been let's say I'd been if I had the last of his mechanics ironically enough as we're going to talk about that later if I'd had the last of his mechanics then that would have been great but with the slingshot mechanic that we have, it just didn't work as a as a fight. It felt more painful than it felt like. It didn't feel like you were using much in the way of skill more than it was much in the way of a bit of luck and a bit of, you know, it just didn't feel... It, the mechanics of, of fighting a moving character didn't feel fluid enough to make it enjoyable as a challenging boss fight. It just felt frustrating. And another... Another part later on from that, maybe two parts on, there was a part where you had to, there was some archers on a wall that you can't hit or take out. They're just peppering down. An AI character's pushing a wooden carriage to protect you from them. And you've got to stay behind the carriage as you're going forward with your brother who you, you're taking around this uh, this place. Uh, hang on a minute. Is that true? Yeah, pretty sure it's true i can't remember now but anyway yeah yeah it's true because he keeps shouting that they're coming they're coming so we're behind this thing and that's fine but then you get enemies coming running at you and you've got to try and get the only way to take down enemies in that scenario is to headshot them with a pebble from the slingshot the problem is the minute you've got a fast moving enemy with a headshot it felt more like luck than it felt like skill when you were to, you were to take them down and we just ended up in this loop i must have had to try it about seven or eight times to, to get past this little bit just to get to this gate and it was only taking down i think one two three four five maybe five enemies Two, two come from the front. It might have been four, actually. It was th it's maybe four or five. And it was just really frustrating. It just The mechanics just didn't feel that they were built for hitting moving targets at that speed. So it, the per they were fine for when you were talking about, you know, guards just guarding an area and you've got to stealth hit them and that you know, sort of thing. But, yeah. So it was only a t tiny things we're talking about here, people. But the game itself was uh, it was gorgeous. This, it was the smoothest 60 FPS I've seen in my life, people. are Absolutely beautiful. Well, anyway. <laughs> I've seen a few others that were as good. But beautiful, buttery, smooth 60 FPS. 1080p. I think I might have been playing it above 1080p on screen. But obviously, you guys are only seeing it on camera. But even if it was only 1080p, it was still bloody gorgeous. And the music was superb throughout the game the voice acting from every character pretty much was well in fact every character i'm not going to say pretty much every character was superb um it was just not really anything to fault other than a couple of frustrating parts that i just didn't feel were down to me i did i did feel like they were down to the mechanics so i can't recommend that game enough people if you've not played it then go and play it uh, you can finish it in 12 hours you well i've done it in 12 parts and the last part was probably about an hour and three quarters and there might have been another yeah so anywhere between 13 and 14 hours will get that game complete for you 
terrific story absolutely fantastic leaves itself open for what comes next which we're going to get in the next couple of months absolutely fantastic couldn't couldn't praise the game more people so i got that finished and as i say you guys will see the next two parts tomorrow and sunday so that that's done we do still i keep saying that i will go back to elden ring and i will i nearly recorded some beginning of the week there and i put it on i just did not have the vibe for it at all i i watched i just rewatched. so i've got my mind refreshed on it but on my last part but i was just i wasn't into it people i wasn't into it so i just uh when i when i played tell finished i was already thinking what am i going to play now because i don't want to go straight back to elden ring what am i going to do you know and i'd already had it in my head that i might look at some of the let's plays that i've been doing that i hadn't finished we've still got victor Vrance out there but it's kind of tailed off in its popularity very quickly so i'm not sure whether we delve back into that or not let me know in the comments below but I can always tell from the amount of people viewing a video how popular or not popular it is, certainly right now. The thing with YouTube is it's weird because like you go back to it in like three months' time and suddenly, you know, three thousand people have watched the first part or something. So yeah, it's a tricky one. But I wanted to I just wanted something fun again because I was enjoying the thing with the Plague Tale was I was just enjoying it so much uh, to see through a story and I was enjoying the gameplay, apart from those two little segments. So, yeah, I'm, and then a comment came from, oh, I'm going to, uh, March Cav, I'm going to say March Cav, because I think that's what it was, <laughs> on the channel, I did give him a shout out on the, the first one that I recorded, part nine, about, he'd obviously just started, well, he or she, <laughs> I'm assuming, it could be either he or she, let me know in the comments below, <laughs> but March Cav had just started watching Kingdoms of Amalur, and he, uh, put a message on the board saying oh i know you have started playing an elden ring let's play and you're on with that but i don't I, there's nothing more than i love watching a bit of amalore you know while i'm working away sort of thing and it really the minute i saw kingdoms of amalore i was like that's the one i need to go back to that's the one i if you remember ages and ages ago for anyone that follows the channel i did a, quite a long playthrough of of that on the xbox one x re-reckoning this is and I think we must have got somewhere between 30 and 40 parts at least. It was a really long playthrough. I'll have to go back and check. But then the Series X came along. So there was no point in continuing that playthrough. I wanted to start a fresh one. Then we started the fresh one. And I did eight parts. Uh, about an hour each. And the, it was great. And it was buttery. I mean, it's the 60 FPS on it is just feckin' ridiculous. It is really buttery smooth. Just like uh, Playtale was. But I mean the speed you're moving around in kings of amalur i mean it's, it's just unbelievably smooth and a the minute i the minute i put it i lost my train of thought there people they're, they're, they're just thinking about the buttery smooth <laughs> so we did yeah we did eight parts now that's what it was we did eight parts and through those eight parts there was a bug that whenever you pushed the controller stick up and sprinted, it was fine. But the minute you moved the controller to the left or the right while you were sprinting and pushing up, the, the minute you moved it to left or right, they, they stopped sprinting and started running normally. And it was the most frustrating thing, especially in boss fights. Uh, well, sorry, just in fights in general. So I, I could have I could have kept going with it, but I think because of the amount of I played on the Xbox One playthrough, combined with that frustration and combined with other things that I wanted to show off on the channel because the Series X was so fresh and shiny and new. I obviously just got sidetracked on other things and went off. But I had every intention of coming back and, you know... And there you were, people. This was the very time that I thought, you know what, fuck it, let's get back into Amalur, people, eh? Uh, just to rediscover Tawilly, if nothing else. <laughs> it's never going to grow old, people. A place called Tawilly. Uh, so yeah, so that's uh, what I'm on with at the minute. Uh, whether I do any more Victor Van, I don't know. I guess you can let me know what your thoughts on that are. But I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more of Kingdoms of Amalur. I had the best time with the first and second, well, nine, part nine and part ten, which I recorded yesterday. You've got part nine today, you'll get part nine tomorrow. On Saturday morning, in fact, tomorrow morning. And I'll get more, I'll get loads, hopefully, my plan is to get loads of Kingdoms of Amalur recorded this week and maybe throw in a little bit of Elden Ring, we'll see what we do with Victor Vran, I'm not sure what we're going to do with that yet. So, I'm pleased I got Victor Vran onto the channel though, because I think it is something that people will search for to see what it's like, just in general as time goes forward, as another Diablo-esque type game. So, super happy with that. There's something funky going on with this camcorder, it's probably some a button I've pressed last week. There's little squares popping up, every time, like, Ellie's face there. 
and it's got a big square around it on this camera. And my face keeps getting a square on it. It's like it's centering on center points and stuff. So I don't know what the focusing is going to be like on this camera. <laughs> anyway, I must have I must have hit something when I was doing the record last week. Last week, if you were, if you watched last week's sort of vl cheap vlog, I used the camcorder just to record downstairs, not like this with the posh mic and everything, just holding the camera and walking about and recording myself. So I must have pushed a button because I've got squares popping up all over me. It's very distracting, people. So there you are. So I'm looking forward to doing a lot of recording this week. And hopefully there'll be plenty of Let's Play up on the channel for you guys to enjoy. I hope I hope Amalor's going to... I mean, already there was like 23, 24 views on it. And I only put it up earlier. And for my little channel, that's quite quick to get that many views on it. So I think, I think it's certainly something people still want to watch as a Let's Play. Hmm. Right, shall we, people? Shall we get into the topic of the day? I'll need my glasses for some of this because we're going to read a couple of articles out. So here's the gist of it, right? Here's the gist of this video. So they decided to remake The Ra the Last of Us part. The Rast of Us. The Rasta. <laughs> we start that again? They, started, they decided to remake The Last of Us. And they wanted to remake it in the engine of The Last of Us Part 2. Right. So they announced this quite a while ago and they said The Last of Us, which they're now calling The Last of Us Part One, which is the remake, is is built from the ground up in the new engine that they used to make The Last of Us Part Two. Right. And that was the crux of it. Everyone lost their shit. Woo, this is fantastic. Yes, the best game ever. And it's it's what I, I mean, I said for a long time it was my favourite game of all time. Probably it's still up there with Dead Space and Dead Space Two. And a number of others that uh, we'll, we can talk about at the times, but certainly in in the, uh, yeah. Anyway, we'll talk. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. But massively, massively, in my, it, I had so much love for that game that when two came around, I had my serious issues with two. I did end up completing it. I did end up enjoying it to a degree, but it's never matched the heights of the first one. And I think there were several reasons that they wanted to make remake the first one firstly i think they're making a trilogy i think we're going to get a third for the last of us i think they'd be crazy not to i think it was left hanging on a edge of like we need to know what happens to ellie after this and i think there is still a story to be told about the fact that she's still carrying this cure around and nothing's ever happened with it i think her purpose even now that spoiler by the way can I just say spoilers? If you've not played The Last of Us Part 2 <laughs> and you don't want me to ruin the story for you, please don't watch this podcast from this point on because I will be referring to what happens in Part 2 quite a lot. So major red flag, spoilers. If you've not played The Last of Us Part 2, this is your chance to turn off and walk away and I'll catch you in the, the next podcast because it's very difficult to talk about a lot of this stuff without referring to Part 2 and it wouldn't be great for this podcast to not talk about it. So I apologize if it if it is the case. If you're not bothered about hearing about it, chances are you've probably heard about the big spoiler in part two anyway. So there you are. You've had your warning. I'm now going to keep going, all right? So turn off now if you don't want any spoilers for part two. So, yeah, I mean, we're kind of left with Ellie having realized that the revenge was all for now and, you know, she's, she's lost everything in going for revenge for what happened to Joel. And I think, especially now Joel isn't there, the the inner need that she needed to feel like her what her purpose was, and she felt like her purpose was to bring this cure to the Fireflies in the original one. That was her purpose. She, you know, again, spoilers for, for the DLC that came with the first game, but she lost that girl that she was in love with in that fight that, that that finishes up that DLC. They both sit there waiting to die because they've both been bitten. Of course, her girlfriend dies and she doesn't. And the whole journey of that first one is that she feels like this is, this is her purpose because she should have died that day and she didn't. This must be her purpose. And to some degree, Joel robs her of that, but he lies to her in doing it. But you can tell at the end of the first part that she, she's accepting what he's saying to her, but she doesn't really believe that. She doesn't, she doesn't know what happened in that place. And she, 
I think she kind of does want to know, but doesn't want to know at the same time. And she just kind of accepts that Joel said there was the, the, there was no use for you. You know, there was other people that were the same and it's all over now. So I think there is, at the end of part two, there's definitely a story to be told about what Ellie does now that she's lost everything. What is her purpose? What is she going to do? What is she going to do with this gift that she's carrying around with her? And, you know, do we see a third part? I mean, if you're going to start killing people off, <laughs> you might as well kill Ellie off and give the cure to mankind, I guess. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see. But I feel like they've decided they want a trilogy. And I feel like in order to make that trilogy, everything that they want it to be from a start to a finish, they want the first game without the restrictions of the PlayStation 3 and a bill looking like and feeling like The Last of Us Part 2. And I get that and I understand it and I think it's great. I think it's fantastic. There's no one that will love playing that game through again with all that super, super amazing visual stuff that we got in part two and playing that in part one. Because I can't actually bring myself to play part two. I've, I, I, I said a couple of weeks ago in one of the podcasts, I played a little bit of The Last of Us Part 2 again from the beginning because I wanted to see how good it looked in 60 FPS. I hadn't played it in 60 FPS since they released the patch for it for PS5. And it was oh, it, it was beautiful and it was great to play the opener. But the more I played it, the more I thought to get to the bits that I really enjoyed, I've got to go through some serious fucking misery <laughs> to get there. And there was nothing that I wanted to... I didn't want to play through the story just to play those bits that I enjoyed. However, with The Last of Us Part 1, even though it was this dark, miserable world, you were drawn to play through it because of this love between these two characters. This father-daughter love that they just carry through the whole thing, that just grows through the whole thing. The weird characters that you meet on the way, the great levels you fight on the way. And it was just, everything was right. The pacing was great. The story was a story you wanted to see through. And the story in the second one was a story that I still have serious doubts about where they went with it. But in the end, I kind of accepted it. I get why they did it. But I think in trying to be as dark and sort of, twisted is probably a long word, but dark as they went and the direction they went, I feel like they lost a lot of their audience because they didn't go in any kind of direction that was fun to play that game more than once. And even fun playing it once was a stretch. And not because of the gameplay and not because of the mechanics and not because of the visuals and not because of the music and not because of the voice acting. All of that stuff was brilliant. The thing that let it down for me was the story. I feel like the story, it, it, it destroyed the love that we have for this franchise it just took everything away that we loved about the first one and didn't put any of it back in the th in the second one that i could find it was all just too miserable and too dark and i just can't bring myself to play through it again i think if they do play a third if they if they make a third one i might force myself to play through it and i'll thank myself for doing it the other thing is i didn't want to do that whole open area again either <laughs> I know it's not that open, but I kind of, at that point, thought, you know what, I think I probably would have preferred it if they just left it as tight as the last one. You know, enough places to search around and what have you. I think, in all, in some respect, I'd rather they didn't expand it so much as keep it as tight as the first one, linear style, where you just had these tiny little open areas in your linear path to search around. But instead of having half the doors shut give you more places that you're able to get into in that small environment rather than open up the environment and then still give you half of it shut off by doors and stuff. So I think they could have sort of done that a little bit better. In the end, I, I kind of understand... I understand why they wanted to redo the first one. So, you know, there was those, there was those reasons for doing it, in my opinion uh i think from a designer's point of view and a person that wanted to tell that original story's point of view it's heaven isn't it i mean you go back and you can redo this game in all this glory that you didn't have all this power all this you can make it look the vision i think they had back then was greater than the the playstation 3 so therefore you know i think being the per still having the people there that were involved with that game being able to produce that game again in the same visuals and stuff that you've got in The Last of Us Part 2, I, I, I don't think you can really argue with that. I think if you can do that 
as a studio and you've got the teams to do it without a, without it affecting the new stuff you're going to bring out that's not remakes and stuff then absolutely go for it you know there's no reason not to do it and i'm delighted that they're going to be doing it so i get why they're remaking it it's not a problem for me and i think there's there's a multitude of reasons as to why you should if you can with a game that is as amazing as that one redo it and i think it's also true that I think part of the reason that they might have decided to remake it, for me, and I might be completely wrong, and, you know, I'm sure Neil Druckmann will never see my podcast anyway. <laughs> I love you, Neil. But I, I don't know if there's a little splash and a hint in this remake because they feel like they upset a lot of fans with the second one, that they want to give them the first one back with all this extra beauty and all this, there is more to just the beauty of it, by the way. We'll talk a bit more about it when I read the article, but with all this extra uber, you know, beauty and everything else that comes with it, to be able to play it as gorgeously as you can play the second one, I think it's a little bit of a tip the hat to the fans and say, look, here, have the first one. <laughs> and then at some point we'll get a third one that maybe does match the first one's story and brings that want to play the thing more than once feel back. So, you know, if the first one's about love and the second one's about hate, then what's the third one about? I mean, you can you can make your own minds up about that. So I think there's every reason to remake it. I think it's a great idea. I think it's brilliant that they're doing it. All of that is fine. And I don't think any fans out there had a problem with it either. And there's one singular reason that everyone gets angry about this at all, which we'll talk about. <clears throat> so what happened was they, they said... A number of weeks back, uh, sorry, a number of months back, that this was coming, and it was coming this year, and the date will flash up in some of the clips. I think it might be the second of the ninth. You know, I think it might be second of September or something like that. Oh, yeah, maybe. Hmm. Second of the ninth, I think. And uh, yeah, they said it was coming this year, blah, 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 blah. And then all of a sudden out of the blue, we get leaks. We get, we get a leaked video footage of what's coming. And the big thing was that people noticed that there was no change to the gameplay, the, the, the actual gameplay mechanics, i.e. there's no prone. So you can't lie on your stomach like you can in the second one. Um... What was the other one? There's no dodge, which you can do in the... So if someone swings a knife at you in the second one, you can hit a button and try and dodge it. That hasn't been added. And that's the only two major ones I can think of, to be fair. The thing is, though, and before I go into talking about that, let's, uh, I'm going to need my glasses for it. We'll read an article that kind of talks about it a bit more in depth. And then we're going to talk... Once we've talked about this sort of negativity bit, we're going to talk about what Naughty Dog came out with today and we'll be showing the footage of, of what was going on with that. So, we've got the negatives and the positives. Yeah, we've got everything on this channel, people, eh? Everything. So, The Last of Us Part 1, the gameplay judges. Let's uh, crack that open, shall we? So, this is coming to us from Games Raider. Tip the hat to them. This news article. The Last of Us Part 1 leak features shiny screenshots and gameplay footage. Excuse me, people. We get a look at the new workbenches, combat, accessibility options, and more. The recent The Last of Us Part 1 leak has given fans their most up-to-date look at the game in action. The leaks have come from, I'm not going to say the name because I don't like leakers, on Twitter. The Xbox era co-founder shared a series of images and videos which contain everything from cutscene screenshots, combat gameplay, display options... The new workbenches, the controller, setup screen accessibility options, and more. According to another one of tweets, the leak is from the most up-to-date build of the game, but it's unclear whether it's from the final version or if anything will change between now and release. Despite not being confirmed that this is the final, the game's final version, fans have been quick to point out that not much has changed in the upcoming remake, despite the game receiving a complete overhaul. As pointed out in the replies to the tweets, many fans are disappointed that the new version of The Last of Us won't have the options for players to go prone like The Last of Us 2, which I just mentioned. 
And here's the, here's the kicker, of course, the, the big reason that everyone gets angry. Previously, fans have questioned whether $70 or £70 in this country is too much. For a new version of the PS3 title, leading some fans to denounce the game and even prompt The Last of Us remake dev to deny claims that the remake is just a cash grab. Regardless of how you feel about the project, there's no denying that Joel, Ellie and the rest of the cast, including the Clickers, have all looked better, uh, have never looked better. In fact, some of The Last of Us fans can't stop praising the remake's new visuals. In other news, just last week it was revealed The Last of Us Part 1 has gone gold, meaning it's done, uh, meaning it should be ready to ship ahead of the game's September 9th release, yeah, it's September 9th, September 9th release date. Naughty Dog also re recently revealed that we'll be getting new The Last of Us Part 1 gameplay in the coming months. Although the leaks give us a decent idea of what to expect, officially released footage will give us a much more accurate look at the upcoming release. Uh, yeah so there you go that's the end of that article there so the big the big kicker here is right and the reason that people are losing their shit is because if this game was coming out at 40 pounds and not 70 pounds or 40 dollars and not 70 dollars nobody would be blinking an eye at the fact that the mechanics and what have you in their eyes haven't changed right now that's not technically true and we're going to talk about all the positives in just a minute but let's just get our heads around why people are angry right so that the, the reason that people are angry i'm going to take these glasses off until we read the next article people is mainly because they don't want to spend 70 dollars or 70 pounds on a game that has been a ps3 game then already re remastered for the PS4. So if you're a true fan, you've bought it twice. And now they're doing a remake and they want another $70 off you. I'm going to, if I buy that, I'm going to have that game three times downstairs. I mean, f for me, w w it just, uh, even if they had put <laughs> extra game mechanics in it, I still don't think it's worth $70 or £70, right? That's just my opinion. Because... There is no doubt whatsoever when you come down to, you know, the the concept and art designs, the music, the acting, that all of these things are already done. Like 60 to 70 percent of your game's done. So you can't be asking people to be paying out $70 or 70 pounds for what is work that was done years ago. <laughs> You've not had to do that to make this game. Like, I'm not saying it's easy, I'm not saying it's cheap, I'm not saying any of that. But I, what I am saying is, if you were to release this game at $40, $40 or £40, pounds, you'd still make a gazillion fucking quid. I tell you what, you would make, I think, more money doing that, because you'd get a hell of a lot more people buying it at 40 quid than you would at 70, 70 quid. So, you know, I suppose you could argue, if, you, if you've got half the amount of people buying it for twice the price, do you care as a developer? But you get a lot of goodwill from your fans as well. Like, you know, you shouldn't forget who got this game where it is. Yeah, you've made a great game, but it's the community and the people that buy it that keep you getting a second one, that keep you getting a third one, and keep them coming back to your studio for more games. So you should give them something in return. I mean, like the 60 FPS patch and stuff like that, you know, fine, but they're little things and things that you think would have been built in anyway with that prospect in mind. But without any shadow of a doubt, there is no way that that remake is $70. The Last of Us, uh, sorry, the Resident Evil remake, Resident Evil 2 remake, Resident Evil 3 remake, none of those fucking games are $70, 70 quid. <laughs> and those those games are actually, they are different mechanics and different everything else. Like, they're not like the same game using the same engine. And everything. Well, no, that's not the same engine in The Last of Us, sorry, but they're not the same. You know what I mean, though? They were top-down looking games. Like, we, they made them over-the-shoulder shooting games. They they were, weren't even that. I don't think they were even full price when they came out. So there is no doubt in my mind that this is something I think that PlayStation is forcing upon its first-party studios just across the board and they shouldn't be enforcing it on this remake, in my opinion. I think Neil Druckmann said himself back in 2020 or something like that. So it's taken them a couple of years to stick this together. And that, for me, is not a, it's not a $70, $70 game. Come on now. Uh, I think if you look at the flip side of it, though, right? That's my opinion, right? And I might have sounded a bit grumpy saying it. That's my opinion. But 
all right. I mean, Neil Druckmann has his studio of Naughty Dog and he runs that and he knows better than anyone else what the cost output is to make any game, whether it's a remake or a new one or whatever. And if it's taken them as much time to make that remake as it did to make The Last of Us Part 2, which was $70, 70 pounds, then fine, right? Maybe it's worth $70, 70 pound, right? There's no way that that game took as long to make as that game, right? So uh, that's the way that I look at it. But that said, Neil Druckmann would also argue, I suppose, that an awful lot of the work done in The Last of Us Part 2 is carried over into The Last of Us Part 3, when or if we get one. And therefore, that Part 3 didn't take as long as Part 2, but it's still going to be $70. But, you know, I, I think we understand, though, with a new game, you've got concept arts to sort out, you've got... Uh, level designs you've got all this sort of stuff none of that stuff needs done for a remake you don't need to do level designs when you've already got the level designs done from the original so you know uh, there is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that playstation shouldn't be forcing a 70 70 70 pound price tag on this on this remake and that's what's getting people angry right people were almost willing to accept it and say that it wasn't a cash grab if they'd put the physical fighting mechanics into the remake that we're in part two and that clearly hasn't been the case so i think people have got a valid reason to be a little bit upset but i don't think we need to be losing our shit <laughs> because all we need to do is not buy it people on day one and just wait for it to price drop at some point or wait for it to go on the playstation plus list at some point which it will do at some point pretty quickly i think because there's no way that you're going to get a huge amount of people continuously buying that game, you know, to any degree where it makes anything less of sense to just stick it on PlayStation Plus Extra or whatever it's called. And then just play it on there, you know, pay your 10, what's the extra one, 10 pound or something, 10.99 in this country anyway, and and just play it for free on that when the time comes because it's not like uh, the true fans who seem to be the ones that are the most upset anyway have already played it a million times so it's not like you're missing anything you know what happens in the story it just looks better and plays a bit better and you know so i don't think there's any real reason to be that upset about it just wait for the price to drop would be my would be my thing if it if it upsets you that much to fork the money out the only way you're ever going to make a difference the only way we're ever going to make change is to act with your wallet, people. Don't give them the money. <laughs> if you want them to stop doing it, you've got to stop buying them. You know, like, if you don't think a game is worth $70 or £70, do not buy it on day one. Do not buy it until the price comes down. Because if you do buy it, they'll keep making them at 70 quid. So it's the only way they're ever going to stop. And I'll tell you now, Starfield is not going to be 70 quid. It's going to be 50 quid. So <laughs> all Microsoft games, they won't, they won't be 70 quid. So, you know, you can argue a little bit that PlayStation have earned a right to charge more money on those big hitters, but not on all of their games. <laughs> you know, you know, all PlayStation first party studio games are not worth $70, 70 pounds. There's no way. You can't compare them. You know, you can't... I was gonna, I was gonna compare the cat game, but I don't think that was seventy quid anyway. And I don't think it's a first party studio, is it? I don't think it's Stray. Can't remember. But anyway, uh, that's the sort of negative spin on it. So there was a reaction to this, right? Because obviously Naughty Dog were really upset because it was like another leak. I mean, I don't understand where these leaks come from. Like, who the fuck has got access to that footage, given it to somebody that leaks information, and got anything out of that? Like, what have they got out of that? <laughs> you know what I mean? Other than just pissing off a company that's working really hard to deliver something special for fans. Outside of the price point, right? Naughty Dog have been working on this game. They they want to they want to be the ones to launch it, release it, show people the footage while they're talking about it, like we're going to talk about in a minute and see. And it's just taken away from them by some nasty little piece of work that in the end is just some sort of social media snitch, people. And in every other walk of life, nobody likes snitches. So why do we like snitches when it comes to gaming and movies? <laughs> right? They're just snitches and they should be done away with people, not, not 
in life. <laughs> <laughs> not they, they shouldn't be killed or anything i'm not <laughs> i'm not saying people should die but they should just be like got away with like at the minute you leak something and you're proved to have leaked something online i think you should just have your account blocked or something because it's just nastiness like there's no reason for it at all like i can be doing without leaks really everybody gets all excited about leaks but the problem is when you get the official event it's not exciting anymore you've just missed it like, you've missed your opportunity to wow people or, you know, all those moments at E3 where people just lose their shit because suddenly something appears that we've never heard of or didn't know was coming that quickly and stuff like that. It just loses its oomph. And it must be so frustrating for studios. And it, it, this isn't the first time it happened to Naughty Dog in the last year or so. It's been happening to them, you know, regularly. So who the fuck? They, I don't, under, like, I just find it incredible that there is anyone inside those studios that has the ability to get a recording take it out the building and give it to somebody i don't know unless it unless there's some sort of thing going on and i don't work in game development people but maybe there's a thing where they give it to people for testing outside of the studio maybe that should just stop happening <laughs> if you want to be a game tester go into the studio and you don't get to record nothing and you get searched on the way in and you get searched on the way out I don't know how this stuff gets out there. I really don't. I mean, I get, I suppose, you know, I'm living in old terms there. I suppose there's an awful lot of stuff on the cloud, but, you know, you don't have to have your gameplay footage on the cloud, do you? Keep it in house. So, in retaliation, people, well, not retaliation, but I think I'm not sure that we would have got this today had that leak not happened yesterday. So, Naughty Dog came out with their 10 minute video <clears throat> today talking about this is what we have done this is what the positives are this is what you're getting for your buck and we'll read through the ign article first tip, tip the hat to ign for their article the last of us remake yeah perma, permadeath mode revealed alongside a host of other improvements so in the wake of the reveal of the last of us part one a full remake of the original 2012 release for playstation 3 there were plenty of questions about how much it would actually change but based on a new video released by naughty dog today the answer is plenty the last of us director neil Druckmann was among those taking center stage to outline some of the biggest enhancements to the beloved classic from graphical enhancements to improvements to accessibility the team also outlined a host of new features which include a new permadeath mode, a speed run mode where players can time their runs, unlockable costumes for Joel and Ellie, an enhanced photo mode, a model viewer mode. That's on top of big changes to AI, graphics and controls which aim to enhance The Last of Us at pretty much every level. For instance, the remake will utilise the dual sense haptics to add tension as Ellie draws a bowstring or to enhance the, tacti the tactile feel of Joel and, Ellie's, Joel and Ellie petting the giraffe. Naughty Dog hopes that these changes will make The Last of Us remake, as Druckmann puts it, extremely better. Is that even a real sentence? <laughs> a... That the original, uh, sorry, extremely better than the original game. The Last of Us Part One was first confirmed back in uh, back during the Summer Game Fest, after several leaks. Whereupon we got to see the updated version running on a PS5. Critics have wondered whether The Last of Us needs a full remake just a decade after its original release. But Naughty Dog insists not just a cash grab. It's the definitive way to play The Last of Us. Neil Druckmann says. We'll be to uh, we'll be able to see our, for ourselves just how enhanced the Last of Us remake is when it releases on the second uh, September second on PlayStation Five and oh and PC same time. Well, there you go. So, right, so I mean, I would advise anyone that's interested in this topic to go and watch the official video from today because they do talk about an awful lot of stuff that's in this game that has clearly made it a better mechanically running game. Okay, no, the actual actions you do in fighting have not changed, but everything around you has changed. They've sorted the environments out. They've sorted things out. Then when they go popping in front of you and things 
uh, getting shot at and things, the environment, it feels in your face all the time like it does in the second one. They've increased the AI ability. Well, they've put the AI from two in one. So they're very, very clever. The the characters that are coming at you are talking to each other, telling you where they are. We'll tell, if one sees you, they communicate with the others. They start flanking. They do all sorts of this sort of shit. None of that was in the first one. So they have done loads to this game. Right? I'm not saying that this justifies a $70 price tag. I'm just saying, in my opinion, it definitely justifies a remake of this game along with the enhanced graphics. Because this game, if it was just a game, just any game that was kind of okay, I wouldn't be saying this. But because it is such a all-time great, I think there's every reason to be doing a remake when you've got the power of the PS5, you've got the engine you've just done for the PS, uh, the, the Last of Us Part 2. And I think it's just... I mean, we have to remember, of course, that The Last of Us Part 2 was a PS end-of-life PS4 game. <laughs> so, technically speaking, you know, what they're building now, if there is a Part 3, is it being built for... A, yeah, it will be built for a probably end-of-life PS5 or a few years PS5. So what's that going to look like? But I feel like we've got to a point now where it's not... It's not about necessarily the jump that we saw from a PS3 to a PS4 and a PS4 to a PS5 because we've got to a point now where the visuals are so stunning that it's really more about if we are doing an end-of-life PS5, The Last of Us, is it going to run even smoother at a higher resolution? And that's pretty much all. Not that they'll have changed anything in the actual way that they do the graphics and facial designs and all that sort of stuff, which is different from PS3 to PS4. So, you know, I think whatever jump happens for a part three, if and when it happens, it won't be anything like that. It'll just be, oh, we've managed to cream a bit more power. So you're getting proper 4K and 60 now or something like that. So I've got, I'm actually really pleased that they're remaking it. From the minute they announced it, I wasn't sure if I'd buy it day one anyway. Because I feel like I do, especially after playing 2, I do feel like I want to play that game again, the, the original. Just to get my love back for that world. Because the, the second one kind of stripped me of it. <laughs> and again, only because of the story and the, the route they went with it. I didn't actually mind them. Again, spoilers to go away if you don't want to hear things about part 2. Didn't actually mind... The fact that they killed Joel off. And I didn't mind the fact that she got angry. Uh, but I just... The whole thing just felt... Too dark. Like... There was nothing... In Ellie's remit... At all... That would have suggested... That she would become... A bloodthirsty assassin. Because of something bad happening in her life. Like... If you play that game right... And look at the amount of people that Ellie slaughters in that game. And then compare it to the amount of people that Abby kills in that game. I think Abby kills like <laughs> very few. It's not many people. It's a tiny amount of people. And yet through the entire part of Ellie's playthrough, she is slaughtering human beings throughout the land, including pregnant women and everybody that you know just madness absolute mad there's no way that ellie would have murdered a pregnant woman right in my opinion like it just wouldn't have happened right and i don't care what anybody says about what frame of mind she was in or the fact that it was reaction or a gut reflex or something she wouldn't have done it she wouldn't have killed a pregnant woman and i get that they did it because then there's a scene afterwards where she tries to get abby not to do it because she's pregnant and all that malarkey and how far will you take hate and stuff i get it but it just wouldn't have happened, right? That's not in Ellie's character to do that, in my opinion. After playing the first game, that is not who Ellie is. She's not an assassin, and she's not someone that murders people for no good reason. They're certainly not pregnant people, right? One person killed Joel, not all of them. So, you know, I think it was kind of like... It was all out hate, ignoring who Ellie was. And I, I just, that's what annoyed me about it more than anything else. It kind of said, well, it doesn't matter who you thought Ellie was or who Ellie is. She's just going to go on a hate fest and slaughter everybody because Joel died. She's angry and that's that. Didn't take anything into account about the fact that until the very end of the game, and even that wasn't about who she was. It was more about a realization of the fact that this isn't getting me anywhere and this isn't going to bring him back. But yeah, it just didn't feel right. 
on multiple levels and it didn't make it a bad game it didn't make it you know i still think it i mean i think i gave it a nine out of ten when i played it i might have given it a 10 out of 10 i think i did give it a 10 out of 10 <laughs> i think when i finished it and i finally got over the hurdles of it i felt like okay it's a 10 out of 10 for what it was but i think if i was to score it now i'd have to give it a nine out of ten simply on story because i just don't think a lot of that story worked uh i'm not saying it was a bad story i just don't think it was a story that worked with that character and what that we believed who that character was i just don't i just don't think it worked i think they could have done it a lot a lot better without going into such dark territory so anyway but i i'm, I'm actually I'm, I'm delighted they're remaking it i'm delighted of getting the opportunity to go back and play the first one again and get all my love back for that franchise because frankly after playing the second one much as though it was an amazing game to look at and and action areas were amazing there were some amazing action areas in it abby actually got the best action area she got the best i always prefer fighting the infected than i do the humans the humans become really oh, so repetitive after a while but the the clickers and all that the, the the infected are just so much fun to fight and dark and spooky and horror-y uh and abby got the best of those sections but yeah, I mean, outside of all that good stuff, I just felt like my love for the franchise died, and I have no reason. When I played that first one on the, the PS3, I must have played it five times back to back. That's how much I loved it, and I played that probably played it three times back to back on the PS4, on the remaster, oh, the remaster. Yeah, that's how much I loved it. Uh, and again, I'll probably play it, you know, multiple times when we get the the remake. But most likely, I'll wait till the price drops because there's no real reason for me to buy it on day one. I've, I know the story. I've played the game umpteen times. I know the joy I'm going to get out of it. So I might just wait for it. I mean, it's the same with Dead Space, the Dead Space remake. I'm still not convinced that that studio is going to give me something that is something I'm going to love as much as I love the original. I'm not sure how they're going to twist and turn that game. Their history is like Battlefield 2, uh, Battlefront 2, sorry, and something else not two titles that you would think oh this studio can remake a, a dead space game with you know make it amazing so i'm still not sold on this remake at all anyway so and even then i've played dead space platinumed it on the playstation 3 maxed out the g's on it on the the xbox so i've got no reason to <laughs> you know i've there's no rush for me to go and play it so we'll see what happens people but the world and the law and ever the reason I fell in love with this game, the original was just everything that was good about it was this the way it starts. You know, you you've got Joel losing his daughter the way he does. You've got a time frame going by that we don't see. Now there's an option. The Last of Us Part Three could be Joel's time between losing her and when he meets Ellie. I mean, that is a prequel waiting to happen, that. I mean, to see what happens with Joel in that time frame, and he was a nasty bastard in that time frame. <laughs> I mean, there's all sorts of things with him and Tommy going on. So there's a story to be told there. I mean, I'd prefer to know what happens with Ellie afterwards, and I'd prefer to see a trilogy done, but it would not surprise me with Neil Druckmann whatsoever if he went back and did a prequel first. Let me know what you think in the comments below about that little number, but I'd love to see that. And obviously Tess would be back in it then as well uh, because she's obviously spent a fair bit of time with Joel. So there is a story to be told there. Whether it's a story that's probably a DLC, I think I think it probably is. I don't know if there's a whole game in that. But I feel like... I think he already said there's no DLC coming with the second one. So I feel like if they did a third one, it might well be that there's maybe a DLC thrown on later on that it tells the story of Joel's prequel, which I think would be great to see. Uh, and I think it would work really well with the franchise. But then what I loved about it was this dark world that was suddenly thrust into after the infection happens. And this beautiful story of this guy who struggled for, what is it? I mean, where are we? 20 years after it had happened, I think. And the hurt of his daughter, you know, he's still wearing the watch, the broken watch that he gave her on that final day and all that. And this connection he suddenly has with this teenage girl that's the same age that his daughter was when she died, or similar age anyway. And is humanity coming back to him after this 20 years of being this outright thug and killer to survive in this world? His humanity starts coming back to him with this love that he's suddenly got and, and this care that he's got for this girl. 
And that's what, that just progresses through the whole, that's what drives the whole, the whole story, people, is just driven by that. And whatever you put around it, it doesn't really matter because we're driven to see what happens with these two characters. And they combined that with fantastic areas, fantastic level design, great fun combat, a combat that was not, uh, well, a combat that was deliberately, in my opinion, not pure. You felt like you weren't, you know, you weren't getting a perfect shot every time and all this stuff. You know, it was, you had to work at it and build stuff up and and get to grips with it. It felt human, felt heavy. I mean, you're climbing up walls, like pulling somebody up. Everything felt heavy, not this you know, flying up walls like bloody Nathan Drake and stuff. It all felt heavy and real person like. And, that, and the music and the acting and everything was just perfect. It was superb. And that's what made me fall in love with this game. That's why I'm delighted that they're remaking it in this beautiful new engine. And for me, if that's all they were giving us was the exact same thing in the beautiful new engine, I would still buy it. Not at £70, but I would still buy it. And I'd still love the opportunity to go for those new trophies that they bring with that new remake. And just have an excuse to do it all over again multiple times because I just adore it. It is, as I say, I say often that it's my favourite game of all time. Sometimes something else will take over, but it always pops back to the top <laughs> over time. It's just, I loved it. My whole heart was in it. So, you know, I hope we get a third. I hope, I hope people are sensible with the remake. I kind of hope that's, that, that Naughty Dog change the minds and PlayStation let them drop the price on it just to say look the you know I feel like if this had happened with Phil Spencer and Xbox he would have the day after there was uproar he would have said oh we are, we're here you we're here you we're, we're dropping it down to 50 quid and I think people would be happy with that because we understand that it's a remake and not a remaster we understand there's a lot of work gone into it but it's not the same amount of work that goes into starting an original or you know uh, you, you've got all nearly all of the groundwork there for for making your game and shoving it in your new engine. So, I, yeah, I feel like, and I hope that maybe they'll turn around and go, right, okay, we've dropped it to fifty pound. There you go. There's one for the fans, and they should do that. And any remake they do there, or remaster they do thereafter, that's based, they they keep that concept in mind. Frankly, I think seventy dollars, seventy quid is an absolute rip off, full stop, and therefore it just. And I think most people feel that way. And that's why when you see a remake at $70, £70, it feels like a ripoff. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I think I feel like if, if Xbox were remaking a Halo in a brand new engine, I don't think it would be a full 50 quid. I think they'd probably do it at 40 quid. And, that you know, their games are 50 quid already. So it's just madness. I do not understand. Like, it's almost like, well, it's coming out of first party studio. It's got to be $70, £70. And that's what's pissing people off. It's not anything to do with did we need it uh, is there any point to it is that because that's all irrelevant like if you don't think there was any need for it just don't fucking buy it there's no point moaning about it just don't buy it if you're someone that was just dying to play it is pissed off because they don't want to spend 70 dollars on day one it is annoying it, it does make you angry but the answer is don't give them your money or they'll keep doing it wait until it drops or wait until it goes on the playstation plus extra or whatever how long have i been talking for people Good grief. I think it's been about an hour. So that's my take on it. And uh, let me know in the comments below what you think about all of that good stuff, people. But for me, this comes with a whole bunch of, A, I hate leakers. I hate leaks. I think we should find some way of just getting rid of them off of main social media and just be where, I mean, I don't mind the odd rumor, you know, like I think rumors are kind of different to leaks, though. Like, I don't mind the odd, oh, uh, you know, this game's being made and we didn't know, you know, every now and then. But even then, even then, I still prefer it when you sat there and suddenly it's like, holy fuck, I didn't even know this was in the making. And here it's out um, in November or something, you know. I mean, did that not happen with Fallout 4? Was it Fallout 4? They just went, bam. I mean, we kind of knew that Fallout 4 was in the making or people had rumoured it. And then all of a sudden, it just fucking dropped at E3 with this massive trailer. And they said, and it's out in November. Boom. Mic drop. <laughs> I mean, those moments are just gone because of these fuckers that keep leaking stuff. Like, just stop doing it. You know what I mean? Like, the problem is, these are this is how so-called gamer 
community people are making their name in being a YouTuber or being a Twitcher or being a whatever. They're doing it. They become popular because they leak information and we're all helping them do it because we're reading their articles. We're feeding back to them on Twitter and they're making them, we're making them popular. So clearly I'm in the minority. I say, hey, I don't hate people. I mean, that's a strong word. If I, I don't know if I use the word hate there, but I don't, I don't hate people. I, I hate's a very strong word. I don't like throwing it around. I dislike it when people do it. And I think that there's no, it doesn't make you big. It doesn't make you any better than anybody else that somebody somewhere has been nasty enough to sneak information out of a company and give it to you and then leak it online. I don't see why it's clever, smart or respected in any way whatsoever. And that's my take on it. I'd rather have the reveals the way they're meant to be um, outside of maybe getting the odd whisper here and there that Ooh, that might be in the making. But I don't like seeing things, especially things like his footage, his screenshots, his artwork, his things that have been smuggled out of companies. It's fucking shocking. Like it shouldn't be happening at all. <laughs> it's terrible. I really feel for companies when it happens. I know what it's like to to be spending a lot of time designing something as a, as a web developer and a programmer. I design stuff and make stuff all the time. And not that I make stuff that people are, you know, going to be like oh well i suppose they are to some degree it's like holy shit that's helpful or, holy shit that's brilliant i didn't have that before but you know but i know what it's like to put that sort of care and effort into something that you make and create and to have somebody else just nick it and throw it online it's fucking shocking like it shouldn't be happening um and i just it, it really winds me up no end people no end not to mention it just makes all the summer fests and all the e3s completely pointless because there's no surprises anymore and you can see how upset the, the the devs are when they come on stage and they talk about it you can see they're so upset about it and annoyed and we're only seeing the neil Druckmanns and you know the actors and the the directors uh but yeah i i, I just i'd love to see it just done away with and i'd love to see any account that is an account that drops an original leak of provided information, uh, be it screenshots or videos, just done away with. Like block the, you know, have their accounts taken away from them and just don't allow it. But I realize we live in a world that is just, you know, it's not like that, unfortunately. Uh, sad, but never mind. Never ye mind. You know, I mean, I think... We could live with the fact that somebody's got a a leak of this game's being made. We could live with that, right? So it's been leaked that this game's in the making and the studio just keeps quiet, says nothing, and it's out there. We think it's in the making, right? But the minute you've put in something up that's got a screen grab on it, that's got, uh, you know, video footage on it, I think people sh that are proven to be doing that should have their, should have their accounts taken away. Um, you know, I'm not sure how far you take it, but, you know, I'm talking about Twitter and Facebook and stuff like that, even even YouTube. But I don't know. I mean, there's an argument that says that I'm kind of leaking it because I'm talking about it from two days ago. But I'm talking about it now that Naughty Dog have have actually done something today. But that said, I have reported on people leaking stuff on my channel and you can also argue that i'm maybe getting some viewers out of this because my thumbnail is about the leaks and about what have you but you can't not talk about it when it happens because that's the gaming news of the week you can't ignore it as a channel or as anything else you've got to discuss it or talk about it but what you'll notice on this channel is well i'm not now i'm not going to say i've never done it in the past but i'm not showing i'm not showing the 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 screen grab of the controller, which showed that there was no changes to the gameplay, or I'm not showing that footage that was shown or any of that sort of stuff. So, you know, I, I do try to, I'll talk about it, but I, I don't want to be like I didn't earlier on when I was reading it out. I wasn't going to read out the guy's name and stuff like that. I don't want to promote the person doing it because I just think it's wrong and it shouldn't be happening. Stand united, people. <laughs> Anyway, love to everyone, all right? In the end, I'm not throwing any hate out there, and I'm not... I just... I have my opinion on what should and shouldn't be happening. It's just my opinion. I love and respect everyone that's uh, that's nice out there. 
<laughs> and I'm sure the people that are leaking the information feel like they're not doing anything wrong, you know, and they're just going for their little bit of glory in that moment. And that's okay, you know, but in my opinion, it just shouldn't be allowed. And it should be a thing where you're told if you do that and provide screenshots and videos, you will have your account blocked or whatever. I think that should just be a thing, right? So I'm not saying it should be a surprise thing where that person that did it the other day should just be blocked, like, because there is no rules for it at the moment. I think they do try and take screen grabs and screenshots and stuff down uh, that are on the internets. So I think they contact whoever is in charge of Google Images or, I don't know, wherever the images come from. I think they can track them down to whatever site they're on and get them removed. So, uh, yeah, that sort of stuff can happen. But, yeah, well, there you are. In the end, though, can we finish on a positive, right? I'm super delighted this game's being made or remade. I'm super, super excited to be playing it again. I'm so excited to be falling back in love with this franchise by playing the first one again. Uh, multiple times, I'm sure. And I've got a lot of positivity about this game. The only negative thing I've got about this game is the price tag. And that is that is why everyone is angry, people. It's the only reason that everyone's angry. <laughs> and angry is a strong word as well. I think people are just frustrated and annoyed more than anything else. But that's it. That's the only reason. If you have a price tag of 50, 40 or $50, I think people will be okay, you know, with a proper remake like this. So maybe, fingers crossed, maybe PlayStation will go, you know what, let's appease the fans, let's do, you know, whatever. You know, but uh, I suppose if Neil Druckmann tells us all that it costs as much money to make that game as it did The Last of Us Part 2, then maybe we'll all shut up and just get on with it, shall we? <laughs> but I'm sure he can't. I'm sure he can't say that. But anyway... Love to everyone. <laughs> Once I finish me moaning, I'll, I'll go back to loving Steve. You know what I mean? <laughs> well, there you are, folks. Let me know in the comments below about any of these points about The Last of Us, about game pricing and all that sort of stuff. I mean, how do you feel about the game pricing situation? I mean, I think it's mental to have a PS5 game at $70, seventy pound anyway. And then you've got Xbox that are sticking with their £50 mark on all their first parties. And the third parties are the same price on each, at around 50 or below. I mean, I'm more excited about the Callisto Protocol, and that's 46 quid that I can buy now. So, you know, it's just crazy in my opinion. Absolute madness. You're not telling me. For me, I think that would make, on day one, boom, drop. They would make more money releasing a game at $50 or 50 quid than they would at 70 because people don't have 70 pounds to spend if we're in a we're in a lame year this year there's not a lot coming out this year as well which is another thing and i think if this was next year and there was a next year for me is going to be a bombshell of a year it's going to have so many fucking games going on it's just ridiculous everything that's been delayed is going to happen next year and you've got micro i think microsoft are going to have a Big year next year. So many of their studios are going to start sticking stuff out. One of which is Starfield. And that'll be 50 quid. In fact, it'll be free on bloody Game Pass. <laughs> another big thing. Now that as well, that'll be another thing. If, if PlayStation were actually dropping their games day one on their version of Game Pass, also probably wouldn't be much uproar about it. But they don't do that either. You know, so God knows how long they wait until they do put them on there. But there you go. But let me know in the comments below about any of that, people. I actually enjoy talking about that. It's my favourite game, as I keep saying. So I do love a bit of uh, a bit of Joel and Ellie. <laughs> I'm talking about that. Well, there you are, folks. That's actually got me excited about it now. It's got me excited about the game, talking about it. Just not at that price. <laughs> But there you are, folks. It has been, yes, it has, an honour and a privilege serving for you in this podcast of mine today. And I shall catch you all in the next one, folks. Take it easy. Bye.